Hi everyone, welcome to part three of chapter 14. This is our lecture on chemical kinetics. Last time we were looking at rate laws, which showed us the relationship between concentration and the rate of the reaction. Today we are going to look at integrated rate laws, which are going to show us the relationship between concentration and time. So, like I said, last time we looked at the relationship between concentration and rate, which is just the normal rate law. Um, but it's really useful to have an equation relating concentration with time because a lot of times we want to know, well, how long is our reaction going to take? Or I have this much left and I know I started with this much. How long did it take? Um, and if we use calculus to integrate the equation of the line, we can get the integrated rate law. And that shows the relationship between the concentration and the time of the reaction. Um, this is often more useful, uh, really, than the rate law. So most times when we're trying to figure out um, the order of the reaction with this integrated rate law, we are going to graph our data. So typically when we collect data in our reaction, we're going to collect you know, time data and we're going to collect concentration data. Okay, so time versus concentration, if those were directly related, that's going to give us a zero order relationship. Okay, so if, you know, it's if time, or sorry, if time versus our concentration of A is linear, that's going to give us a zero order. But if it's not, then what? Okay, then we're going to take the natural log of all of our data and we'll plot that against time. If that's linear, then that means it is first order. And you know, if that's still not a straight line, then we're going to take the reciprocal of all of our data, one over our concentration and, pl and, um, and plot that against time. And if that comes out linear, then we know it's second order. Okay, so we're essentially going to make a bunch of graphs and see which one gives us a straight line. And whichever one gives us a straight line, that will tell us the order of the reaction. So you're gonna plot concentration versus time, the natural log of our concentration versus time, and the reciprocal of our concentration versus time. And that will tell us whether it is zero order, first order, or second order. Okay, so that's the focus of today. So if we have a zero order reaction, that means that our, our concentration and our time are going to be directly proportional, right? We're going to get this nice straight line, okay? These are constant rate reactions that we talked about last time, where the concentration has no impact on the reaction whatsoever, right? Remember, anything to the zero, that's going to all go to one. A to the zero is just going to be a one. So rate is directly proportional to our rate constant. So it doesn't matter what our concentration is, we can double it, triple it, whatever, um, and it's not going to change the rate. So our integrated rate law is gonna be this. Our concentration of A is going to equal negative KT plus the concentration at time zero. Okay, so that's what the subscript zero means. Don't get it confused with the, you know, to the zero, that means zero order. Um, but a subscript zero means our starting concentration. That's going to be whatever concentration is on the y-axis. Okay, this was, you know, if we're thinking like y equals mx plus b, right, because this is a line, um, our, you know, our concentration at time zero, that is our y-intercept. Our t value, right, that's going to be our x's. And this, you know, negative K here, that's our slope. Our slope is negative K. And then our concentration at any time we like, that will be our Y value, okay? Um, when we graph concentration of A versus time, that gives us a straight line for zero order relationships. Like I said, slope is negative K. Our Y intercept is our concentration of A at time zero. Um, and just as a heads up, I will give you this equation on the exams, okay? So you don't have to memorize that equation. Anything else you want um, in, in this lecture, essentially, you're going to have to know, but I will give you the three integrated rate laws. Okay, so this is, is maybe not familiar to you, T one half. That's called our half lifetime, or the amount of time that it takes for our concentration to decrease by half. So let's say we started with uh, 20 moles of our reactant. Okay, well, the time that it took to get to 10, right, half of 20, the time that it takes to get to 10, that would be our half-life. So the, you know, T one half, that's our half-life, how much time it will take to get to half. And our equation for that is our concentration of A at time zero, so how much we start with, divided by 2K, and that's our rate constant, K here. I will not give you this equation 
because there's another way to solve this. You can solve this using the rate law. Um, like if we used, you know, this integrated rate law up here, let's say we were going to use, you know, try and figure out a half-life. Say our concentration we started with was, you know, 20. We could, eat, you know, minus kT and then plus, you know, this would, oh, sorry. If our concentration we started with was 20, my apologies, then this would be 10, right? The amount of time it takes for this to get to half. Okay, and if you went, if you rearranged and solved this, you would get our half lifetime is equal to our initial concentration over 2k. So if you want this equation, memorize it, or you can figure out how to do it this way. Um, I show it um, this way on all of the lecture worksheets, so you can get a lot of practice doing it that way, so you don't have to memorize additional equations. Our units for k, whenever we are um, in the zero order, are going to be the same as the rate. Remember, the rate is always in um, moles per liter seconds, or you can write it as molarity per second. Um, and since this, you know, goes to nothing, right? Rate is equal to K. K has the same units as the rate. So either moles per liter second or molarity um, seconds to the minus one, or you can write molarity over seconds, any of those ways. Okay, so the half-life, right? Like I said, the half-life is the, is the amount of time that it's going to take for the concentration to go to half of its initial value. So if we started with 50, it's the time it takes to get to 25. And then the next half-life would be the time that it takes to get to 12 and a half, right? It's going to be half each time. The half-life of the reaction depends on the order of the reaction. Okay, so half-lifes do not happen the same way because, right, the rates don't happen the same way. So our half-life um, will be different for different orders of our reaction. So our half-life here is, you know, concentration of A at time zero over 2K, but that's only for zero order. Okay, let's look at first order. So our rate law that we were talking about last time would be rate is equal to K times A to the 1, right, or we don't write 1, so it's just K to the A. Our integrated rate law is all about natural logs, okay? So it's going to be very similar to our um, rate law for our zero order, except instead of these being concentrations, they are now the natural logs of the concentrations, okay? Everything else is the same, right? We're still in this y equals mx plus b form, right? Except now, you know, there are, you know, on this on this axis, on our y-axis, we have our natural log of A instead of our just our concentration of A. Okay. Um, our our y-intercept here is still the natural the natural log of A at time zero. Um, we still have time. We're always graphing against time on the x-axis. Um, same thing, our slope is still going to be negative k, right? Um, and I wanted to point out earlier, this k here and this k that's down here, they're the same k. So if you solve for k in the rate law, you can use it in the integrated rate law. They're the same k. Um, and then our, our half-life time is now not dependent on concentration, if you'll look, right? There's no concentration happening in there. Our half-life time is, oh, that didn't type out right. It's missing a period there. So 0 0.693 over k, sorry about that, is equal to our half-life for first-order reactions. Okay, it is concentration independent. So once you figure out the half-life, um, it's going to be the same. So every half-life will happen every 10 minutes or every 20 minutes or whatever the case may be. Okay, our units for K are S to the minus one or one over S. And we talked about how to solve for that last time. So here's our half-life for a first order reaction. Like I said, it's constant. So one, if one half-life happens at 100 seconds, our next half-life will happen at 200 seconds and then 300 seconds, right? It stays constant. Every half-life happens every 100 seconds. And that means, right, again, that our concentration is decreasing by half every 100 seconds. So if we start with one mole, after one half-life, we have, you know, half a mole, and then we'll have 0.25 moles, and then, you know, 0 0.125 moles, and so on and so forth, okay? So the, for a first-order reaction, the half-life is constant and not dependent on concentration, whereas when we talked about zero-order, it does depend on concentration, okay? Again, though, you can solve this the exact same way. You don't have to remember this equation here. You can, you know, solve it. So let's try this again. If I start, you know, so at, um, if we have, you know, let's say natural log of 50, because say we started at 100, equals minus kT plus 
natural log of 100, right? This is the one we start with. This is our concentration A at time zero. This would be our concentrate of A at any time, right? You're always going to make this one be half of whatever you put here, okay? Um, so there's other ways to solve it other than using that half-life equation, but they're really handy if you have them in front of you. Okay, second order reactions. For a second order reaction, we will get a straight line when we plot our reciprocal of our concentration, one over our concentration versus time. Okay, and you'll notice this now has a positive slope. On all of our other graphs, we always had slope is equal to negative k, right? Slope is equal to negative k. For our second order reactions, we have slope is equal to k. So that's the big thing that's different here. Okay, um, otherwise, instead of writing, you know, concentration or natural log of concentration, we have one over concentration. Okay, but again, k is now positive instead of negative. So um, our graph, right, we're just looking for what gives us a straight line. Slope is now k, our y-intercept is 1 over a subscript 0, and then our half-life time is 1 over k times our initial concentration. Our units are going to be either liters per mole seconds, or you can write molarity to the minus 1, s to the minus 1, um, you can write 1 over molarity seconds, however you like to write it. Okay, So again, we're looking for what gives us a straight line. So here are all of our integrated rate laws. For a zero order, time versus concentration will be linear. For a first order, our time versus our natural log of concentration is linear. And for our second order, time versus 1 over concentration is linear. So again, when you do this, you know, when you do an experiment, you're going to collect this data. Time versus concentration. And the easiest thing would be just plot that. Does it give you a straight line? Start there. If it doesn't give you a straight line, you're going to take the natural log of all of your concentrations, and then you'll plot them versus time. Does that give you a straight line? Okay, great. If it does, if not, then we'll go to the next one. Take one over all of your data and plot that versus time. See if that gives you a straight line, right? So let's go ahead and try one. So this would be um, a problem just like you might solve. Find the integrated rate law and the value for the rate constant k. And so here's our, our data we collected, time, and we have our concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Um, over time, our concentration is going down, right? So this means that it's a reactant, right? So we can write our rate law. It's always going to be based on our reactants. You can use, um, I know I said no graphing calculators for the course, um, which is true, but if you happen to have one lying around, there are instructions on Canvas for how to make graphs in your graphing calculator with all of this data. But I actually think it's going to be easier um, to use Excel or Google Sheets for making these graphs. I put together a Canvas page for you that walks you through how to make these graphs in Google Sheets. Um, so it's not required that you do this, but I would strongly, 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 can't even say that enough, recommend that you go through that um, because it's going to help you do these lecture worksheet problems. You need to figure out how to graph it some way. So either graph it on your graphing calculator find some graph paper, or figure out how to do it in Google Sheets. Pro tip, much faster in Google Sheets once you figure it out, okay? But for this problem, I've graphed it all for us. So here's our, our time versus concentration. So we have our data there, and I plotted it, okay? And these are our regression results. Even just looking at it, though, without looking at the regression results, this is not giving us a straight line. This is definitely a curve, right? A straight line would be like, you know, if I could draw straight lines, that would be it. Um, but this is definitely not a straight line. And what we're really looking at here in these regression results is we're going to look for this R squared value. Um, and if you're not familiar with this, R squared is called a correlation coefficient. And essentially, it's just telling you how good of a line you made. Um, so our best, what we're looking for is we want R squared to be equal to 1 or like 0 0.9999, you know the drill. Um, this 0 0.8891, I know it doesn't sound that bad, but that's actually a pretty bad line. And even looking at it, you can tell that's a pretty bad line. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is probably not zero order. Probably some other graph will make a better graph. Okay, so time versus concentration, had that been linear, that would be zero order. It doesn't appear to be. So let's go ahead and now we're going to take the natural log of all of this data, okay? So 
there's the natural log. I, I took the natural log real, real quick for you. And so now we have time versus the natural log of our data. Okay, so if we plot those, here's our graph. And I'm gonna say, that looks like a pretty good line, right? Even just looking at it. And then if we look at our, our square value, 0.99978, that is probably going to be our answer. It's probably going to be first order, right? Because that's a pretty good line. Um, but just in case, let's go ahead and check second order. Okay, so now instead of taking the natural log of all of our data, we're going to take one over our concentration data and plot that against time. So here it is, one over our concentration and plotted that, that looks like a curve, right? We're not seeing this like straight line. Um, and if you look at our R squared, it's 0 0.8723. That is definitely not a good line. So the winner would be this graph, right? So it's clearly going to be first order because that is the one that gave us a straight line. Okay, so let's go ahead and go forward then. So we know our you know time versus the natural log of our data gave us the straight line, so the reaction is first order. That means our rate law is going to be rate equals K times our concentration of hydrogen peroxide, right? This would be a one, except we don't write ones, right? So it's just rate is equal to K times our concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, the integrated rate law is going to be our natural log of our concentration of hydrogen peroxide minus KT plus the natural log of hydrogen peroxide at time zero. This, all I did, right, we had we had this before. This is like our, our, our normal form of it. And all I did is instead of writing A, I wrote hydrogen peroxide, okay? Um, but we know that it's, you know, that form of the reaction because it's first order, right? So that's why this is going to be a one, and, and that's why we're using all the natural logs in our integrated rate law. But we don't know the rate constant, right? That was the other part we were supposed to figure out. We got to figure out what is K. So there are two different ways you can do this. The first way is to calculate the slope for, from the time versus the natural log of hydrogen peroxide data. Okay, so here we are. So our slope is our change in our concentration of hydrogen peroxide over our change in time. Since this was a straight line, you can pick any points you like. So this would be, you know, the hydrogen peroxide concentration at time two minus our concentration of hydrogen peroxide at time one over our time two minus time one, right? This is, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? Um, so here, what I did um, was I took these points. I took the, the end points, okay? I just didn't include the zero. So it would be, you know, this minus zero, this minus zero. Um, so we can use that and solve that. We will get our slope is equal to negative 8.35 times 10 to the minus 4, four second to the minus 1. Don't forget your units, okay? This is a first order reaction, so we need to make sure our K has a first order unit, okay? So there you go. You've solved slope. So if we look, our slope, remember, if we are thinking about this as Y equals mx plus b, this is our m, right, our slope. So slope is equal to negative k. So we need k, right, we're going to take the negative of our negative and make it positive. So k is equal to 8.35 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds inverse. All right, the other way you could do it is we had this uh, linear regression analysis, and this a here, that was our slope. Um, which is super cool. So A is equal to slope. And again, um, I remember that our slope is equal to negative K. So you need to take the negative of that. Um, so slope is negative K for zero order and first order, but it's just equal to K on second order. I know this is a lot to remember, but it will get easier as you practice. Um, if you make the equation of the line in Google Sheets, um, which most of you should be able to do, you should know how to make the equation of the line, but if you don't, um, in that instruction document, I put how to get the equation of the line. And it will spit out, it will spit out the y equals mx plus b. So you don't ever need to calculate the slope if you're doing it in Google Sheets, because you will have the slope in the equation of the line. And then all you need to worry about is is slope equal to negative k or positive k. All right, so let's go ahead and try this one. So this says, based on the experimental data at the right, look at I was so nice, I already took the natural logs and one over the concentrations and plotted them for you. 
okay? Um, and I wanna know what is the order of this reaction with respect to the reactant hydrogen peroxide and how do you know? Um, what's the integrated rate law? What's the value of the rate constant K? And then what would be the concentration at 4,500 seconds? Okay, so that one we didn't cover yet, but I want you to give it a go and see if you can figure it out. So go ahead and pause here, see if you can figure out this problem, and then unpause once you're ready to see the answer. Okay, let's go over this. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out the order of the reaction with respect to hydrogen peroxide. So remember, we are looking for the one that makes a straight line. Now, I didn't give you the R squared values um, in this problem, but I think it's pretty easy to see which one makes a straight line, right? The one in the middle, that one makes a straight line. So since we're plotting the natural log versus time, that means that it's first order. And the way that I know is it makes a straight line when it's natural log of the concentration versus time. So the integrated rate law is going to be the natural log of hydrogen peroxide equals negative KT plus the natural log of hydrogen peroxide at time zero. All right, and then it says, what is the value of the rate constant K? All right, now we gotta do some math and luckily I have it all on the next slide. So our slope, right, we're gonna calculate our slope and you can pick any two values. So again, I used the first one and the last one. So I used these because it makes it really easy if you're you know, subtracting zero. So y2 minus y1, so that's gonna be three minus zero, and then over x2 minus x1, so 3,600 minus zero, and that's going to give us our rate constant here, Eight, negative 8.33 times 10 to the minus four seconds inverse. I carried out the, the underlining is for significant figures. So if you're slacking on significant figures, I would check them out. Um, or, you know, send me a message and I will give you some stuff to review significant figures because I will grade you on them all semester long. So you've been warned. Um, anyway, so this comes out to 8.3 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, second inverse because remember, we have slope is equal to negative K. So since this comes out negative, right, we need to make it positive. And then the last one, what would be the concentration of hydrogen peroxide at 4,500 seconds? So what we're going to do, right, we're going to plug this in for time. So um, we have, you know, this equation here. Okay, so we have our natural log of hydrogen peroxide at, oh, so this should be a little t, at any time t equals negative kt plus our natural log of hydrogen peroxide. So this, this starting concentration, we have that right? Here's our starting concentration. So we plug in um, into here, right? This is our equation. We are going to plug in our k value, our t value, right? That's going to go here. And then natural log of our starting concentration, right? So we solved for k, we have our t, and we use natural log of this. Um, I chose to use this one in our equation just because it was a little more precise and not rounded. Um, either one would work out totally fine. Okay, so then you're going to plug all that in and you're going to get our natural log of our concentration is equal to negative 3.75. Okay, and the way that we get rid of these natural logs is we do the E function. So if you if you forgot that from math, now you've been reminded. Um, so the way that we get rid of it was we go E to both sides. So E to the natural log of hydrogen peroxide, E to the negative 3.75. Uh, and we do that, we get this big old mess, um, which gets us 0 0.02 moles per liter. Okay, um, when you're doing natural logs and things like that, since I didn't ask you, um, in Chem 1, and probably your other professors didn't either, to know the significant figure rules with respect to natural logs. That is the one time you are off the hook, and I'm not going to grade you on significant figures. Okay, every other time you need to know them. Um, anyway, so that's how you solve this problem. So we're solving for our concentration at time t, essentially, and our t would be 4,500 seconds. Okay, so here's our summary of rate laws. So we have um, our, our, you know, zero order rate is equal to K and we have first order when we have our exponent as an imaginary one and our second order where it's a two. Our integrated rate laws we learned about today, right? And so they're all listed there. And then the plot that produces a straight line, okay? Our concentration A versus T or natural log versus T or one over T, right? You got to figure out which one of those. 
Um, again, for the zero in the first order, slope is equal to negative k. Second order, slope is equal to k. And then these are your half-life equations. Again, I am not going to give you those on an exam. So if you feel like you want to know them, those are things you can memorize. But like I told you before, you're, you can totally do it um, with the integrated rate laws, right? Just plug in your initial one as 100 and then, you know, the other one is 50 and you can always figure out the half-life. And that works for any of them. It doesn't matter which order of the reaction it is, okay? And that is it for today which is super cool. Um, but now you need to go and get a lot of practice doing these integrated rate laws. So I'm gonna go and show you um, Canvas real quick. So in Canvas, if you go into this chapter 14 module, you'll find this one that says graphing data in Google Sheets. And like I said, I walk you through how to graph this data. I give you some data, I tell you, you know, you know, open it up in Google Sheets and all of this different information, okay? Um, and I've got pictures and everything. So I would walk through figuring out how to make these graphs so that you can make your, you know, nat your concentration versus time, your natural log of concentration versus time, and your one over concentration versus time, okay? Clearly this one is second order because one over concentration versus time gave us a straight line. Um, like I said, it's going to pop up with these R squared values. Okay, and um, then it's also going to give you the slope of the line, which can tell you, um, you know, your, your K value. So this is super helpful. I would um, do this before you start working on the lecture worksheet problems so that you know how to graph these types of problems when you get to them. Okay, that is really it for today. Get lots of practice doing these integrated rate law problems. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, please send them my way. Otherwise, I will talk to you guys next time.